Awesome. Um, well, good evening, everyone. Um, we're going to run through uh, two-factor authentication in Drupal 9. Um, I've also left some time for questions at the end. So if you have anything uh, you'd like to ask, um, make sure you do. Um, just getting into proving user identity. Um, there are a few ways um, or factors of proving a user's identity. The first and most common method is using something the user knows, like a password. Another way of proving identity is verifying something a user has, such as a smartphone or hardware token that provides a unique pin. The final way of proving identity is verify verifying something the user is, such as through biometric authentication. While you can use any one of these methods to authenticate a user, a combination of these provides the best security. Uh, as I mentioned previously, a uh, password is the most common method of verifying a user's identity. This is something the user knows. Uh, passwords can, but shouldn't be, reused across services. Um, and passwords can also be stolen via phishing or social engineering, by implanting a keylogger on a user's machine, or compromising the password manager. Therefore, we, we need to rely on a second factor to securely prove identity. Uh, so what can we use as a second factor? Uh, biometrics um, is one possibility. Um, it verifies something a user is. A common example uh, of biometric authentication is face ID or touch ID in phones. However, biometric authentication is not widely implemented in web services due to privacy and other concerns. Therefore, most web services rely on one-time codes, something a user has to provide a second authentication factor. There are a few ways of doing this. One example is SMS. Upon login, a one-time code is sent via SMS to the user's registered phone number. Um, however, SMS is not a secure protocol and is vulnerable to man in the middle or SIM porting attacks. A more secure alternative is HOTP, HMAC one-time password. It's more secure than SMS, uh, as these are generated locally by a user's device, um, but these are quite long-lived, providing a large window of opportunity for a stolen code to be used. The best option uh, for a one-time PIN is a, one, a time-based <laughs> one-time password. This is similar to TOTP, but codes are rotated every 30 to 60 seconds and provides only a small time window for an attacker to use a stolen code. Uh, let's discuss some prerequisites for setting up two-factor authentication in Drupal 9. Uh, we need four contract modules, uh, the TFA module, the encryption module, the key module, and the rail AES module. Uh, and we need the GA login module as well. Let's see, the TFA module provides a framework for implementing two-factor authentication, while encryption or rail AES provide a way to securely encrypt shared secrets. Uh, the GA login module implements support for OTP codes using the TFA framework. Finally, we'll need a way to handle secrets. The encryption module relies on a user-generated AES private key to encrypt data. This key can be injected in a few different ways. For example, it can be injected as a secret in Docker or Kubernetes. Uh, PHP environment variables are a file on disk, but if you're using a file on disk, you need to make sure your permissions are very tightly scoped. Uh, this is a general um, workflow of how Drupal authenticates an OTP code. So user logs in and it prompts the user for their uh, one-time password. Um, after the user types in and sends it, uh, the code is sent to the TFA module, um, which then combines server time uh, with a shared secret that's encrypted with the real AES module to verify that the user's pin matches. Um, and if the pin matches, they, their login session is approved. Um, and if it's not, well, they're not allowed to log into Drupal. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but can everybody see the diagram or do you want me to um, zoom in a bit on the diagram? That's visible. That's small. Cool. Um, awesome. Um, right. Um, so this is why I went through earlier with the diagram. Um, and now I'll be showing you a demo of how one could set up um, two-factor authentication in Drupal 9. So this is one of uh, my hobby projects. 
um, that I've set up earlier, it's configured with all the required modules uh, for two-factor authentication, and we can actually go through the process of setting it up now. Um, so as explained earlier, we'll need a private key, uh, which can be generated using an open SSL command. Um, let's generate the 256-bit private key. Um, obviously, in a production deployment, you wouldn't just put the key in your web root. That's bad practice, but it's running on my local machine. Um, so once we've generated our private key, uh, we can see here. Sorry, this will need to be zoomed in a yeah. bit. Ming. Oh, sure. That's it? Yep, much better, thanks. Awesome. Um, so yeah, you can just use an open SSL command to create the key. Um, that's what the key looks like. Um, then we can jump back into Drupal. Uh, and the first thing we'll need to do is go into the key module. Um, I think my session got logged out just now there. We have to go into the key module and we'll need to define uh, a key of our private key. Um, our key is a file on disk, so we can just grab the path to the key. Yeah, enable these options, save it. Um, now that we've got our private key installed into Drupal, we can define an encryption profile. Uh, we can name it anything. Um, and we'll use Rail AES to uh, perform encryption and we can save our profile. Uh, we can also test our profile just to make sure it's working properly. So I can say, um, I want to encrypt the string, Drupal. Encrypt, um, it'll give me an encrypted string. I can take that and I can decrypt that string. And this is all running through our new um, encryption profiles. It's using our private key to encrypt and decrypt the string. So as you can see, the encrypted string was decrypted successfully with our original text spec. So our encryption profile is working. Uh, finally, we can jump into the TFA module settings, just enable TFA. I've uh, got some stuff pre-configured. It's set to TOTP. Um, can leave most of these as default. Save that. Oops. Try again. I got logged out just now, so I think it invalidates all these forms. Uh, and now that TFA is set up, we can go in and um, set up TFA for my account. Uh, so it's just in the security tab, set up application, do my password. Um, and this gives us QR code. And you can use any um, two-factor authentication app. I use Authy. Um, let's go ahead and scan the code. It can take a while. There we go. Um, it's detected uh, that this is a Drupal um, installation and it's giving me the chance to save the code. Um, and that, that's my two-factor code. I can just go in and verify 785-500. Um, and now two-factor authentication is set up on my account. So if I go ahead and log out and log back in, it's prompting me for my two-factor authentication code. And if I put in a bogus code, it doesn't work. Uh, grab the code from my authentication application, 575-458. Um, and now I'm logged into my Drupal website. Uh, that's it for the demo. Um, it actually went quite well, um, surprisingly enough, as far as live demos go. Um, does anybody have any questions? Let's bring up the slide. I want to ask, yep. is, uh, what happens if I need to um, uh, just rotate the private key? Um, because your shared secret is encrypted, well, all the users' shared secrets are encrypted with a private key, um, you have to reset two-factor authentication for all accounts if you need to rotate the private key. So it's quite important to keep it private. Well, that but generally, if someone manages to steal a private... Sorry? That 
that will be outage um, when you renew or regenerate the pri uh, the key, the sec secret key, isn't uh, it? Possibly, it's probably best to get everybody to log out and reset their um, TFA settings. But as you saw before, you can actually turn off TFA and it'll just disable it globally for all users. Oh, um, okay. But yeah, mm -hmm. no, um, updating your private key does involve a, um, a reset. Um, generally, private keys are long lived. And if someone has managed to steal a private key, that's a really bad situation. Um, it indicates that you know your setup in general has been quite badly compromised. And then okay. we would need to you know, engage the appropriate instant response for that. Yeah, because because we uh, have some policy need to um, rotate the key periodically. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, understand now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's maybe possible to use an intermediate key, but um, that's not implemented in the two-factor authentication module right now. It just uses the one key uh, to encrypt and decrypt everything. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, any other questions? Oh, sorry, um, my doorbell has gone off, but thank you very much um, for the demo. Uh, sorry, um, for having me. Sorry, I will be right back. Stop recording. <laughs>